Hey everyone, welcome to the next lesson. This is a great lesson and I want to draw your special attention to the handout. This handout gets star stage presence right now because it's so significant. Hey everybody, what I want you to do with this lesson is to actually take some time and think about all the things that you're already doing relative to your own productivity and performance. Things like time management, meeting management, communication with your colleagues, project management, organization, all the things that you would self-assess going into making a fantastic, productive, and effective or efficient day. And what what this lesson is designed to do is to question that, to really put the microscope on, here's what I know, here's what I know I know, and here's what I need to know. So let me jump to the end of this five minute segment, I'll come back a little bit, and then of course if you have some time, I'll dive in again in the longer extension at the end of this video. But here's the end point. Go into the forums or go into the members here in Mastering Workplace Performance Online and see if there's someone that you could connect with, someone that you could bounce ideas back and forth with over the next few lessons. It's an accountability program, if you will. And you know, we went back and forth on how to build an accountability program within this, this product. And what we found the easiest way to do this is, is to just jump in and kind of self-select. So Skype with someone, if you live in a similar city, if you can get to a coffee chat with someone one morning, bring lessons eight and nine to the table and see what can happen. So this lesson is all about what you already know about productivity, and what you need to know about productivity. Lots of examples that we could probably share with one another and if you and I got to sit down, I'm sure you could share some things with me that you've learned and in this instance, I'd love to share some things with you. Years and years and years ago, as a high school teacher, I started studying a couple things. I started studying learning styles, thinking styles, and working styles. Relative to communication, there are some things that we can fall back on and I can really take a look at how people communicate. When they're speaking with one another, there's things that I can listen for and watch for. I remember the first time I ever read a book on body language, I was blown away that there are ways that I can experience a conversation differently if I use my body differently, if I watch the way that they're talking, their gestures, the light, the light in their eye, their questioning, their disagreement, and all kinds of different things. So in this lesson, what I'm going to share with you are a couple things that I've learned about communication. And the easiest way to understand this for me is to think in terms of nouns and verbs. And let's take this out of theory and put it into practice. Do you have a to-do list somewhere in your system, a handwritten or a typed to-do list? Dive into that to-do list and just look for this. Go down the to-dos and ask yourself, is each item a noun or a verb? A noun or a verb? A noun or a verb? And it's fascinating to me because I'll sit down with clients, we'll pull out their to-do list and we'll start looking and invariably they'll mix them up a little bit but invariably they'll lean to one side. So for example, I sat down with someone a while ago and his to-do list, he brought it out, it was a handwritten piece of paper on a legal pad size page and every line was a noun. It was someone's name, a project he was working on, a situation he had to deal with, an event that he was planning toward. It was just a list of nouns. Now what he realized in our coaching was that in order to figure out what to do out of the noun, he had to think a little bit further. Now he particularly liked this. He felt it was his way of engaging and reevaluating where the project was. That was his style. On the other side, I've worked with clients around the world that when you look at their to-do lists, you look down each item on the line and it says call, find, review, print, organize, file, talk to, they're all verbs. Now what does this mean when it comes to communication and time management and working with a group? If I'm a noun and you're a verb and we attend a 30 minute meeting and we try to figure out where we are on a project and where we're going on a project, if I continue talking about the big picture, if I talk about where we're going, if I talk about what it's going to look like when we get there and you're asking about what to do and where are we on the project and what the next actions are and who to talk to about this thing, you could probably see there there's going to be a little bit of miscommunication. So it's incumbent upon me to sit down with everyone that I work and talk with to 
find out where they are. Where's their natural tendency? Do they lean toward noun or do they lead toward verb? And by the way, it's really easy with vocabulary. What I do is I just listen. If someone says, hey Jason, what's the end product on this? Versus, hey Jason, what are the things that we need to do sooner than later? Well. I pretty much know how to communicate with them. Okay, that's it for this segment. That's the executive summary. If you have some time, stay tuned. I'll be right back. I get to share a couple more ideas and dive a little bit further into some working styles to share with you. What do I already know about productivity and what is it that I need to know about productivity? If you're anything like me, and my guess is that you are because you're involved in this program to begin with, this is probably not the first experience you've ever had studying performance, productivity, and time management. My guess is that you've read some books, you've taken some classes, you've probably created some systems that work for you. So what I'd like to do is to back up a little bit and ask you, what were some of the more influential programs that you took? Some of the things that you did in the past that gave you ideas about how to manage your time, your focus, your energy, your productivity, your efficiency, your effectiveness, your organization. Where were you, by the way, when you took those classes or read those books or met with that coach or mentor? And what happens is we will pretty much continue to do what we've done that got us here. Remember from the first lesson of Mastering Workplace Performance Online, we talked about homeostasis. This concept that whatever we did to get here is really comfortable. It's pretty easy. And in order to get there, what might I have to learn a little bit about? It's probably one of the reasons why I so enjoy being on the phone or Skype or working one-on-one -on -one with people at their desks because not only do I get to share with them some of the things that I've seen and heard and learned and read about, but I also get to add the way that they work to that whole big bucket of stew, right? So what I can do is I can take a look at what you do and what she does and what he does and I can put all that together and build up to what we think are some of the best or better practices. Uh, in the first part of this video I talked about communication styles, right? Noun and verb and how I share my goals and my objectives with someone versus how they share their goals and objectives with someone. And this idea that if I think and plan in terms of nouns, that is if I'm thinking about what it's going to look like, what it's going to be like, what the experience is going to be when we get there and I'm working with someone who's really action oriented, they want to know what the timeline is going to look like, what the milestones are going to be, what the checkpoints are then I need to be able to make sure that both of us are seeing the other's perspective. I need to see this from a perspective of verbs and they need to see this as a perspective from nouns so that we can continue marching forward together. Let me share with you something else that we've learned about productivity and performance as it relates to what I'm already doing and what I might need to learn to do. Remember when we talked about the communication styles, right? There's audio, visual, and kinesthetic. There's also what's called learning styles. And probably the seminal book that I read on this was from a, a guy named Howard Gardner out of the Boston, Massachusetts area. And he wrote about the concept that we have multiple intelligences. You know, and I'll always remember I was a high school teacher. I would, I would be teaching and I'd have some students in the back of the class. They'd be tapping their pen, they'd be bouncing their knee, or they'd be drawing or doodling on their notes. I'd have some other students who were always talking. And over the years, what I realized is instead of trying to control their behavior, I actually started to maximize their behavior. What does that mean? Well, uh, I remember I had a student who, she, she was an artist. I mean, you know, she was an AP art. She was a drawer. She, she'd paint her. She, she was a writer. She loved the expression, that creative expression of getting things out of her head onto a piece of paper. And during the class that I taught on world history, what I asked her to do was to draw a picture of the content that I was presenting that day. And I always presented content in very multimodal ways. So I'd show a little bit of a film, we'd do a lecture, I'd do a reading, they would do an activity, et cetera, et cetera. And you know what was fascinating is at the end of these classes, what I got in return were these, these dioramas, these amazing pictures where she was starting to create for herself a real deep understanding through the visual strength 
through seeing what it is that she was experiencing that day. And where this comes into play when it comes to what do you need to know more about to be more productive is if you're working with a team, if you're working with other individuals, if you're an individual contributor on a, in an organization that requires people work together, the more I understand about how people work, the more effective we can be in what they are doing. And that's something else that we talk often about. We talk about the difference, the, the critical factor of understanding the what versus the how. What we're doing and how we're doing it. Those two things through exploration can give you a lot of information and wind up saving immense amounts of time through the process. So if we can agree on what the goal is, if we can agree on what the objectives are, and then through that process of goal planning, project planning, create a series, if you will, of checkpoints, of milestones along the way, then what we can do is we can start to be crafty, we can start to be very sp specific to how those things get done. The more I understand about how my team, how my individuals, how my clients, and how my vendors work, the more I can expect us to be moving along line with the what that we're doing, knowing that we're tapping into and facilitating the strengths of each individual along the way. So those three working styles, right, auditory, visual, and kinesthetic, dive into those a little bit. Listen and watch and experience how the people around you are working, how you're working. You know, if you sit down at a desk and around your desk are stacks of papers and you've got pages pinned to your cubicle or your wall, if you've got papers on your whiteboard with a magnet on those, don't think that you're doing it wrong. Don't think that you need to be cleaner or more organized. To me, I see that as a kinesthetic visual learner or worker. Kinesthetic because you have things spread around and you want to be able to reach back and pull something off of the whiteboard. Visual because you need to see it all. Now could you imagine if someone walks into your office and they're an auditory learner, if they allow themselves to start telling stories to themselves about how that space looks or feels, then that productivity breakdown can be palpable. You know, one of the best things that we can do to maximize all three learning styles is to get people away from their regular workstations. Oftentimes if I have a meeting with 5 or 15 or even 30 people, I ask to do that in another building, in another conference room, because it winds up happening, especially if we work in an office where the conference room looks out at over the desk space area, is people will They'll be visual, they'll be looking around and watching their coworkers walk up and down. They'll be auditory, right? They're kind of listening to see if they can pick up on anything. And in that space, their sensory, their feeling, their, their kinesthetic engagement is really high. So leaving this lesson, what I'll invite you to do is to go put the magnifying glass. Again, study how you work and how the people around you work to see if there's ways that you can maximize each person's thinking, learning, and working styles. You know, there's a lot to be said for this lesson and I would encourage you again to go dive into the forums, go into the membership area and see if there's anybody there that has some interests close to yours. With over 80 people in Mastering Workplace Performance Online right now, there's probably a chance that there's someone out there who has some ideas, some possibilities or some experiences that if you two could connect, if you three could connect, well man, you could probably learn a lot more pretty quick just from each other. So thanks for tuning in. Go in there, dive into this lesson, see what you can pull out. I look forward to reading what you have to share with us in the forums and I will talk to you soon.